A very good morning. We're glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. That's the hashtag on Twitter, Morning at NTV. Be part of the conversation. We do like your feedback on the issues that we discuss here. And of course, like I always say, the policymakers are watching and your feedback could, be, could well shape a national opinion in terms of how services are delivered. Allow us to delve into our Kickstarter discussion this morning and discuss the Rangos and, well, other people describe them as woos within Uganda's oldest opposition party. Well, not only oldest opposition party, but oldest political party, the Democratic Party. At the beginning of the week, at least eight members of the party were arrested as they made their way to the offices along Balintuba Road, that is here in Kampala. Many, including the MP Lulume Baiga, claim they had a retreat or a picnic that was supposed to take place, that was to discuss uh, some of the issues that are pertinent to the party right now, including the apparent switch to the National Resistance Movement of their party president, Nobat Mao. But the president insists there is no switch to the ruling party. This is a cooperation agreement and that it should be taken in that state. Uh, joining me this morning to discuss these issues and see exactly where the Democratic Party is and what that means for the political landscape in the country our MP Richard Sebamala from Bukoto Central. Many thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much and good morning. Good morning. We are also joined by the spokesperson of the Democratic Party, Peter Okoler Lol Amanu from uh, Palisa this morning. A very good morning, Mr. Spokesperson. A good morning, Mr. P. Okoler. Good morning to our viewers. And I'm glad to be live on NTV once more. You put the aspects of our technology uh, together and reading, reading for this uh, particular discussion. Allow me come to you, Honorable Sebamala, and uh, you come to NTV, Morning at NTV, on the backdrop of uh, the arrest of eight members of the Democratic Party at the beginning of the week. The police deployed heavily and they were denied access. They claim they were coming to the party offices to hold discussions on issues they deem pertinent, including what is no doubt what's making news for the last two months, the entering of a cooperation agreement with the National Resistance Movement by the party's president. Before we get into what all this means and uh, how it's going to play out, first, tell me what is the state of affairs when it comes to the fact that we now have uh, a political party in the opposition that has its leader in a cooperation agreement with the governing party? Mm, yeah, uh, actually what is happening is very simple. Mm. The Democratic Party leadership is in NRM and the members are in the party. <laughs> it, is very, it is very clear. Because 80% um, right. mm -hmm. uh, uh, or 90% of the members mm. do not agree with the cooperation agreement. Ordinarily, leadership is about having followers. Yeah. For as long as you look back and you don't see any followers, that means you, you, you unless you're conflicting with your common sense, like I said, mm. that means you, you, you're taking a wrong path. Uh -huh. So if, uh, when, when you look at the whole picture, you find that uh, we have no problem with the cooperation agreement between Mao and, uh, and his team mm. and uh, the president, and so we asked him to leave the party. It was as simple as that. Mm. Why? You take an example of, uh, look at uh, Busongwe, mm. where, the, where he was campaigning for. It has actually decampaigned the man, the woman, Benedict. Mm. And even the chief campaign of that particular person was saying, this thing is affecting them. Go to the, to the MOOBS elections mm. that were in, uh, that are in, uh, the, the guild elections that are in, in, in Makere University Business School. Yeah. This issue also affected the candidate there. So that alone should show you that the path that you're taking is not the correct one. Mm. Two, the set, what you, you ask, what is the set of affairs? The set of affairs is just simple. You come up with a cooperation agreement that stipulates what position you should get, you and others, and in the leadership, what position that they, they should get. Then you leave those members of the Democratic Party that are on the principle of the four, the four founders mm. of this party. Mm -hmm. It is more than just truth and justice. I always tell people, and I have shared this with Mao, that uh, 
actually, uh, the reason why we are in the opposition is not because we 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 we, we don't see good in the in in, in NRM. Mm. No, we are, we are only saying we can offer better solutions. That's right. I was the other time I was saying that FDC can come up and say we want uh, priv to privatize education. Uh, uh, NRM says it should be free education, but never so me. Then uh, DP should come up with homeschooling. Mm -hmm. We are saying, okay, let's do homeschooling, connect internet everywhere. Parents should, you know, work half day and then, you know, go back home and, you know, go through the syllabus with their, what, with their children and then we can create, uh, what do they call it, education centers where they do their final exams. We are all doing the same thing, but offering the, we are offering education, but we are giving different you know, solutions to mm. the same thing. So, just because of that is why we say we, 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 when you join the NRM, you're joining their agenda. Needless to say, mm. Article 115 and Article 117 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda is very clear. The moment you cross over to cabinet, you are, you lay allegiance to the president and you're collectively responsible for what the government is doing. So how are you in the, the, in government and then at the same time in an opposition party? All right, thank you very much. We shall be delving uh, very shortly into where this leaves the members of the Democratic Party exactly. who are not part of the leadership mm -hmm. or whether they are constrained to be able to make uh, particular inroads in as far as uh, uh, the administration and uh, the way forward for the party is concerned. But allow us go to Mr. Opio Okaleu, who is the spokesperson of the party and, of course, uh, well, he's the man to tell us exactly what is going on. The first question to you, Mr. Opio Okoler. Why were the eight members of the Democratic Party who wanted to access the party offices at uh, Balintuba Road denied access? What was the premise of such action? Uh, yes, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity again. But uh, I want to talk to Olan Sandre and especially members of the Democratic Party. That in as much as a democratic party is a public organization, there needs to be organization within. I want to tell you that members of the democratic party have got a right to access party premises at any time. As far as there is an arrangement that has been organized. Now, in the event that there is a function that members wish to hold at a party premise, I think it is a courtesy to consult or contact the custodians of the party. Because right now, it is us, the leadership, who are the custodians of the party. The reason why it is important to consult or to actually approach the leadership is because you need to be organized before. You need to be organized and very before. So, so it, it, it is really important that these members needed to first consult and talk to the administrators or the custodians of the party, and thereafter, an organization for the function that they wanted to hold would be caused. Now, what happened is that we learned of the event from the media when they, when, when they were actually uh, 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 journalists were calling us to ask what is happening. They did not have a prior communication. They did not, uh, you know, show any any sign that they would be there. Now, how do we have organized for them? Besides, our headquarters are at City House, not Balintuma Road. Balintuma Road is called a National Campaign Command Center. We are only there at times when the campaigns, when we are having campaigns. Now, when they went there and they found it, nobody opened for them, they attempted, it is reported that they forced their way in. And maybe that's when a concerned Uganda noticed it and invited the police. All right, uh, thank you very much for that uh, clarification. But I'll, before I return to uh, Honorable Sebamala to clarify whether this particular group had uh, made a prior uh, or had offered some kind of communication on that particular event or what they wanted to do at the campaign command center. Allow me ask, within the dispensation of the current uh, laws that govern the opposition Democratic Party, isn't it allowed for parties or party members to commune at any one of the locations that are agreed upon as belonging to the party to discuss party issues? 
Hello? Hello, I just said within the current dispensation of the laws of the Democratic Party, isn't there an allowance for members, certified members of the Democratic Party to convene and congregate at any one of the locations that belong to the party to discuss party issues? Well, that, that is true. I said it is, a, it is a right that comes with a person being a member of the Democratic Party to access party promises, party premises. But, but, but you see, uh, a, a political party cannot be run like a bar. But even in a bar, you can make a phone call and they organize a table for you. Now you cannot just walk in, you are having some function, a special function, and you expect to find the amenities arranged for you. What happened at Balintuma? Our concern is members are at liberty to go to the party premises. But our concern is, if you are having a function, please contact the leadership such that we can organize that function in conjunction with you. We can organize that function and see it a success. The beauty that is in organizing a function together with the administration is that if anything happens, the administration can take responsibility of the same. But the business of uh, approaching a, a, the party premise without even making any communication to the administrators, I think it is not appropriate. For instance, Bali Intuma Road, there is a caretaker at Bali Intuma Road, a young man. I really doubt whether that young man does know the faces that were there claiming that they were members of the Democratic Party. Of course they are members, but to him, I think they were just claiming. Therefore, it is important that there is a prior organization. Why is it that the group that went to Balintuma Road did not have the courtesy to contact the leadership of the party such that we could organize it for them? We could organize tents, we could organize the seats. Now, where were they going to sit? I am told they were going to have a function, a state seminar. Where were they going to sit? So I am only telling them and members of the Democratic Party that in the event that they have to organize a function. They must tell us, and we organize. And we are very much willing, by the way, if they reorganize, we shall organize together with them and have their function successfully done. All right, you, the language that I hear is them and we. We shall be, of course, uh, delving into exactly where the party finds itself right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Between, there yeah. is a cousin yeah. between the yeah. leadership and the members. Did you hear me? Okay, let's return to studio with uh, Honorable Richard Sebamala to respond very briefly on the fact that uh, your <laughs> cluster did not even have the courtesy to communicate about a seminar that you wanted to hold at one of the locations of the you party. Can, I think you can see it is them and us. Well, that the leadership is, well, it's and the members. That has emerged. <laughs> However, within your own rights and uh, within, from where you're acting, don't you think it was necessary? The, uh, to consult. No, let me to tell inform. you. Inform. The Bali to my office mm. holds the Kampala uh, Democratic Party headquarter offices. Okay. It is not just a command center. Okay, mm. should be truthful. You know, when you you lose focus, you also lose the principles of the party. Now, Okore has lost the principles of truth and justice. We should the the the, the, the headquarters of the Kampala district office. Mm. Kampala Democratic Party branch are in Bali Intuma. The chairman of the Kampala district branch was coming to his office. Dr. Rurume Baiga is a party member. Kasson Alkola is a NEC member, National Executive Committee member. That means you cannot say that the caretaker at Bali Intuma does, doesn't even know mm. the NEC members. Nobody doesn't know Mukaku. He's a politician who has come to access Democratic Party premises to say, what is here? What should we do? This is what I hear. He has come to consult. And two, if he is talking about it being a, 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 a command center, a political mm -hmm. command center, a, for camp campaign political command center, we, yeah. have, we are having campaigns in Busongora, we are in Kasese. So these people can have gone there to, uh, to, to assess how are we going to Kasese, what are we going to do, what time are we leaving?
You know, okay, you can't close your own members out of the of party premises. It is uncouth. Let's imagine that uh, this uh, state of affairs continues where we have the leadership within the Democratic Party acting on its own and then some of the members also wanting to be seen to act on their own or even to push the leadership to act as they want. I'd like you to pose questions to Mr. Peter O'Claire that the audience or even me myself as a moderator here might not be able to pose because of our lack of prior information of what's happening within the Democratic Party. Mm. Please pose the questions to Mr. O'Claire. I would have to ask you, where is your loyalty? Where is your loyalty? Is it with the party? Is it with the members or it is with yourselves? Because as far as we are concerned, this cooperation agreement is with yourselves. Mm. You've been given positions because you have the power and the state. You have decided to keep us out of the party premises. You don't even listen to us anymore. Where is your loyalty? Is it with us that elected you? Where is it? Opio Okolel, please respond to those questions. Well, first of all, I, I want to uh, communicate that... Uh, when, when Honorable Sebamala says they wanted to go to Balintuma to organize a, a campaign, now who is going to attend to you? Because you have not informed the leadership, there is only a caretaker there. I, I, I think, I think uh, Honorable Where Sebamala wants to become the president, the president of the party. Yeah. I, I, I think he should, he should revise on the modus operandi, the way things are done. If he becomes the president, shall the party be run like that? So I, I really think we have to be genuine to ourselves. Now, where is our loyalty? To me, as a member of the Democratic Party and a leader for that matter, I would say my loyalty is to the founders of the party, Democratic Party. Actually, the values that were formed to, to run or, or onto which the Democratic Party is anchored were formed by the founders. And therefore, my loyalty to the founders is is, is it actually transcends and respects the values. Now, as leaders, members may have an opinion, but being a leader literally means that you are able to see further than what the people you are leading are able to see. That means that the responsibility of planning and making decisions rests with you. Therefore, if members want to carry out any activity, it's my opinion that they needed to first get in touch with the leadership for proper organization. But the business of running a political party like a bar, I think it is not appropriate because literally a political party, the people who run, the way you run a political party is the way you run government when you are in power, when that political party is in power. Now, if we begin running in a hiki haga manner, in a higledi pigledi way, I do not think that we shall be able to win the trust of Ugandans. Therefore, I, I wish to advise members of the Democratic Party that ours is to serve you as the leadership, is to serve you. Therefore, feel free, feel at liberty to contact us and we organize it for you. And I've given members my word that if the members get to us and they request for that venue or any other venue to organize it for them, we shall do it for them without any hesitation attached. All right. So I, I, I think it, it, it is important that members realize that what happened at Balintuma, it is very unfortunate, but again, I think it gives us lessons. One being that we have to get in touch with the leadership such that we avoid such scenarios. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Opio Okoler. I'll return to you, Richard Sevamala. The spokesperson for the Democratic Party has uh, clarified on your question. Allow me, before you respond to his clarification, to ask you whether the members of the Democratic Party right now who disagree fundamentally with what the leadership has taken as the next course of action have a plan on their own. For example, yes, what is that? You, you, you know, leadership is about uh, everyone being part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if any other person that is not part of, of the part, that particular leadership 
all, all the solutions that, that you're offering. Yeah. Eh? Uh, that means you as a leader, you are creating a virtue in your own space. Mm. So fundamentally, we know that the people that started uh, or founded the Democratic Party founded it for being in power, not to be used as a tool, but to be in, in power. power. And uh, the, the, the solution they're offering is we shall offer service delivery using two principles, truth and justice. That is what they found. And I, I, I wonder why O'Connell does not remember if he's actually having loyalty to the party, to, to, to the founders, then he has forgotten that is what it was. Now, of course, one of the solutions is uh, we are the biggest number. The members. The members. Yes. The leadership is just around uh, 20 people. Mm. Actually, there are around 22 that have decided to connive with uh, some seven years, and they have decided to feel like they are in heaven. We, as the members of the Democratic Party, are remobilizing ourselves. We have had meetings with the UID teams in Kampala, the leadership of Kampala, the leadership of Wakiso. We are mobilizing the, the National Council chairman. We are mobilizing the constituency delegates. Uh, and what we are supposed to do is we are, we are coming up with a... Of course, we have a court petition. Mm -hmm. Already we have a court petition that is ongoing. But we are, we are, we are mobilizing uh, to actually come and ask uh, Mao to hand over the party. Not to explain why he has entered a cooperation agreement. No, 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 but he has explained. Mm. He, uh, you've had the O'Correll. Has thinks, he officially uh, he explained thinks, to He the... thinks that from the, the, for him is thinking for us, illegally, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, he's thinking for us, illegally, because our constitution is very clear. For Mao to take, come up with any agreement, and his co Sinanda, they were supposed to go through the different processes, the NEC, the National Council, and then uh, the, the, the Dead Gates Conference, mm -hmm. which they did not do. So th since they are thinking for us illegally, we are saying, no problem. We are not taking that course of action. We want you to come to the Dead Gates Conference or National Council and explain to us what is going on. Now, Ordinarily, when we had, during COVID, what they did was uh, to go to Guru and then say they have come up with a dead guest conference. Our dead guest conference is with over 2,000 people. Oh. By then, COVID rules were 200 people. So they handpicked a few of their supporters who decided to vary the constitution of the, of, of the party, oh. which was done uh, illegally. He's talking about Higa ways of moving, and that is what they did. They prepared themselves for this time. They knew we are going for an election, we shall not go through, but we are going to go and discuss with Museveni. So what do we need to do now? Let's have uh, 150, 80 members here, we, we, such that we say this is a dead conference that has decided to re-elect us as a Democratic Party president and the rest. Then after come up with a uh, uh, vary the constitution because it's only the the delegates conference that can you know can vary change, the constitution yeah. so they vary the constitution gave the, themselves different positions prepared themselves early enough for what is going to happen after this which is the cooperation agreement. which is the cooperation agreement all right allow us so for us what we are saying yeah. we are going to court mm. we are calling on our members and we are, we are mobilizing you know democratic party is one of the those parties that start from bottom up yeah Actually, uh, we are mobilizing our grassroots to come and request for the party. Opio Okoler, you've had uh, MP Sebamala there speak of the fact that uh, there is an ongoing effort to ensure that either the petition goes through or to condition the kind of uh, arrangement they want for the leadership, as he says, to gladly depart uh, from the Democratic Party and join whatever dispensation they've chosen to join. Let me ask you, as one of the members of the leadership team of the Democratic Party, you spoke to us two days after the cooperation agreement was announced at that press conference or media appearance by Mao and President Chuari Museveni, and you said that Nobat Mao had not contacted or consulted the NEC in the decision that he took, and that the party constitution has a leeway in terms of uh, powers that allows a president to do certain things before he can explain to the National Executive he Committee. Him to make a statement. Has President Norbert Not Mao and the leadership it. taken the initiative to call for a such meeting to be able to explain the cooperation agreement and perhaps map a way forward? 
Uh, well, first of all, I wish to state it in clear terms that uh, the chairperson of Kampala District Democratic Party came out openly to refuse the allegations that he called for that meeting. Now, that in itself calls for a lot of, you know, doubts, and uh, it, it makes the leadership begin judging the intentions of the people who had gone to Balintu Road, claiming that they were going to access. I mean, the, the, the chairperson of the Kampala districts had called them. That's one. Two, it is true that the president of the Democratic Party did not consult NEC. But when you read the Article 27 of the Constitution of the Democratic Party, it calls the President General of the Democratic Party a Chief Executive Officer. Now, a Chief Executive Officer, actually, the Constitution does not summarize the powers of the Chief Executive Officer. But in the law, you chose to when there is that. a matter <laughs> that has not <laughs> been expressly stated, but impliedly averting, it is the duty of court to cause interpretation of them, of the same, in the event that the same causes stupefaction of the people. Now, there was a contention as to the powers of the chief executive officer of DP. And in the case of Rajab, actually Democratic Party versus Rajab, Senkubuga and the 12 others, Honorable Justice Sekana Musa stated it in clear terms, giving the powers and stating the powers of the chief executive officer to include among others, committing the party, and thereafter, that commitment being presented before members of the National Executive Committee yes. for ratification. Sum it up very quickly. In the event that members of the National Executive Committee deem it necessary to uphold the commitment, then the commitment stands. In the event that they think the contrary, then it is a question and it does be. All right. Therefore, it is true the President General did not consult the National Executive Committee before committing the party, but he was operating within the ambit of the powers that is given to him as the Chief Executive Officer of the party. All right, Therefore, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Opi Okolero. Yes. Th Thank you, thank you. I'm afraid uh, time is not our best ally right now. Allow me to uh, tell Mr. Sebamala to wrap this up by, let me ask you very uh, candidly, shouldn't you be seeking uh, amendments to the Constitution of the Democratic Party not to allow the party president to act as a chief executive officer, but one that is mandated by the vote as president? Shouldn't, is that what you should be seeking? No, actually what you see and what he's saying is that uh, our party constitution is very clear. It only allows him to make a statement. He says in the in the case that was mm. the, of Senkubuge versus Democratic very Party quickly, yeah. is where they are getting that clause that the, the, the judge Sekana said that the president can commit the party mm -hmm. and come back and ratify. Then if you committed the party, is it two, three months ago? Two months ago, why isn't he calling the neck, the, the neck to come up or to, to such a way? Because even in its in the, the neck itself, we are going to win him. All right. We are 48 members. All we need is 25. And okay. we shall do anything to make sure that we quash it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Richard Sebamala, MP for Bukoto Central, drawing the lines there for the Democratic Party leadership. And, of course, uh, many thanks to the spokesperson, uh, Pio Okoler La Amanu, who has joined us uh, from uh, Palisa. We do hope uh, you are, of course, uh, doing a lot of consultation when it comes to party activities there and that uh, you'll be reporting to the likes of uh, Sebamala and other members who are not happy at how things are running.